Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up everybody, Latif here. Uh, And we are beginning um, episode 14 of the Good Night Podcast with Latif Mercado and I'm Latif Mercado. Um, I stood here before I pressed uh, record, uh, clearing my throat because my wife says that I need to clear my throat before I start. (laughs) I start. So if you listen to yesterday's um, episode, um, <laughs> you'll see I, as soon as I start, I start coughing. But uh, I think it's nerves. I really don't even think there was anything in my throat. You know, sometimes I uh, I feel a little stuffy. Sometimes I feel fine, whatever the case may be. I'm out here in North Carolina. Weather's like really tripping. I think it's like, God, it's got to be close to 70 degrees, you know? Um, a lot of rain, but I like the rain. We spoke about that, but it's been pretty warm. I'm glad. I really didn't want to deal with you know a cold winter um, this year, so just get by it. You know, I love the winter. I like when it's cold. When it gets too hot, it slows me down. Really, I, I don't want to go out. I mean, it really sucks, man. <laughs> you know, I think it's because of the weight I gain. I think that's why I don't like the heat. Most fat guys don't like uh, don't like the hot weather. <laughs> we like it to be cold. You'll see us walking uh, walking outside. I go check the mail with a hoodie and short pants and flip flops on, and it could be like 25 degrees out. So, but uh, anyway, um, listen. Before I forget, okay, um, we spoke about this yesterday. I'm putting together a Facebook page specifically for Good Night Freestyle. Now, this is the reason why. I catch myself posting. The flyers and the links on my other pages. And since I'm doing the podcast every single day, um, it seems like it's just like every day I have like one ad after the next. And I really don't want that. It just looks too cluttered. And I want to have a place that's really dedicated to this. And so I set up a, a page called Goodnight Freestyle. Um, it will be live tomorrow uh, maybe tomorrow night, maybe. Yeah, maybe tomorrow night. What's the day? Today's Tuesday, Wednesday. I'll say Thursday morning. How about that? How about that? What I'll do is tomorrow's the 15th, which will be the 15th episode. And that's so that's pretty much the halfway point of the first month. Um, so what I'll do is once I put the 15th episode up, then at that point, I will, um, uh, uh, put the page live, and what's cool about the page is, I'm gonna set up. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the, the the post there. I'm gonna put the links to the individual episodes. And I'll try to keep loading it that way, and that way, if you guys have any questions, we could just take it to that particular episode. You know, so you guys could go there and ask whatever questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, so I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, and uh, I really want to get in, get, get some engagement with you guys. I, I think I'm gonna run out. I, I'm not sure what you guys know, what you don't know, what I can what I can help you with. Maybe you have some ideas. Maybe there's something on your mind that you want to share with me. I mean, I'm open. It's like I'm looking for this stuff. Like I, I want to be able to to speak up or maybe help you guys out with something if I could. If it's, if that's something I can do. I mean, you guys have, uh, are doing a great thing by you know, listening in. So th- that means a lot to me. So I guess that would be my way of giving back. So if I can do that, you know, trust me, I want to. Um, so, and that's what it will be, you know, and I don't care if you ask me questions every day, maybe I won't be able to get, uh, to things like right on point, right, you know, right away, but I'm pretty good with my engagement and I'm pretty good in, um, following up with people. I, I don't think I have an issue with that. I don't take forever. I don't ignore post ever. And anybody who's liked any of my stuff or shared any of my stuff on any social media platforms know that 
not only will I, I don't even give you a like. I don't even do thumbs up. I do hearts all the time. I'm like, if the heart is there and the thumbs up is there, why would I give you a thumbs up? The only time I'll probably give you a thumbs up is I don't really uh, agree with what you're saying. However, I do appreciate the comment. Then you might get a, a thumbs up. But I don't really get that. So, uh, so why not post a, a, a heart? I have a choice. A thumbs up or a heart. I'm going to give you a heart. You know, so, um, and then I'm, I'm, it usually follows with a thank you or I try to comment or say something because I, I truly, truly appreciate, um, any, 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 um, uh, any attention you guys can give me whatsoever, you know? So, and anyway, so look out for that on Thursday morning. So we'll have that and please try to be the first ones to go in and request, go in there and, you know, I, I have a lot of ideas, um, that I want to. I want to bring up. I have a few pages on 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 uh, Facebook. I have Freestyle Against Phonies, which a lot of you guys probably know. That's a group. We have La Radio Live, which is run by Fernando Hot Mix Hernandez. That's a radio station. We have Books by La, which is run by me. But you know, those books only come out every so often. So again, it's just a place where I can put the books, even though I do promote the books elsewhere. Um, for those who are new to this, don't know. Yes, I write books. I'm actually on my sixth book. Uh, books are basically more or less based around the freestyle music genre so far. Uh, <coughs> oh, hopefully, hopefully my, my voice, my uh, wife doesn't hear that one. <laughs> that one slipped out. Anyway, I got yep, yep. I got the tea. She she made me my my tea. I'm getting used to this. I I hated tea, but she puts like a ton of honey. So and, and so you know it goes. It's a little easier to deal with. Give me one second. Okay. Still nasty though. I'm, I'm, I'd rather have a cup of Bustelo. I just don't have a taste for Bustelo in the evening. That, that's my morning drink. So, but anyway, listen. All right. So I want to get into a topic um, that has been flowing around. It comes in and out, and it came. It started like way before the holidays, like really intense these last several months, um, and it has to do with freestyle promoters, whether they're club concert, arenas, whatever the case may be, but club promoters. Now, again, this is not a, this is not a plug. There's no links for it, but I have a book out called Freestyle Promotions and the Seven Simple Steps to Getting Started. Okay. And the reason why I'm telling you guys this is because it is in my best interest for whoever is interested in trying their hand out at club and concert promotions primarily clubs. I would always encourage people to give club promotions a chance. If you ever, ever thought at any time, considered doing promotions, and you know how that happens, it usually happens when you go to an event, you turn around, you look at the turnout, you look at the event, and you think to yourself, "Mm, I could have done this, or I could have done this better. Or, you do like I do sometimes, <laughs> is you try to estimate the amount of people that are in the venue, and then you multiply that by the amount of money you spent, you paid at the door to get in. So if there's a thousand people and you paid 20, you know there's 20 grand floating up in there. Now, of course, you're not thinking about the expenses, and there are a lot of expenses, so you can't really count that, but that big $20,000 number is is enough for you to get motivated and kind of get you going. And the rest, you just have to learn how to cut corners and just work out deals and stuff like that. And that's the fun part, you know? But what I want to do is I want to get into the promotions, the promoters in particular, not promotions. So I'm not teaching you how to promote. And my book teaches you how to get started as a promoter. Now, I can teach you how to promote, and that will be another book sometime in the near future and it will tie into this one but that wasn't my uh my goal with this book my goal was to tell you and it's a small book i think it's less than 200 pages um you could get it on amazon barnes and noble mostly online stores you could go to the store some might have one or two they might uh i've probably out of maybe eight stores that i've been to i might have found it once or twice uh people just don't um People, they just don't really stock those things that much anymore. So anyway, so the whole idea of that book was to kind of just get people 
started, trying to give them a really, really solid foundation on how to get involved in, because they, they always got a lot of questions like, how do I start? Where do I get the ax from? Who do I talk to? You know, how much does it cost? How do I pay? What are the contracts like? You know, what are the steps? What do I do now? When it's done, how does it end? What happens the day of the show? So in that book, I basically go through all of that. So it's really cool, very simple. Um, I have notes in a, a note section in the back. So, you know, I, that book is made to be written on. Like, I, I don't want you to save the book. If you want to buy two, one you keep as a collector's item and the other one you write the hell out of it. You highlight it, you mark it, you bend the pages, you rip the pages, you fold the pages, you do whatever you got to do. So you have it. And it's a very, very simple a foundation. Yeah, I could get really intense, but it, that wouldn't help you. So... Let's get into promoters for a second, okay? I wanna make one thing clear first of all, okay? And this is through my experience, okay? No promoter is ever gonna to try to promote. Nobody's going, oh, let me try to rephrase it. Nobody is going to get into the promotions game with the intentions of screwing anyone, period. Sorry, it's not gonna happen. That is not the reason why anybody gets into promotions. I know because over these 30 years, I've spoken to so many promoters, so many that have moved forward and done what they wanted to do, others that did some window shopping and I never heard from them again. And then there are those who went in, did their thing, it was eh, they had a bad experience and they left and those that really killed it and they went in on to bigger and better things. So I've seen the entire spectrum of how this can end up. But I want to make it clear, promoters do not get into this business to screw anybody, not the fans, not the artists, not other promoters, not the club owners, nobody. What happens is not all of them. And this isn't just club promoters. This goes on for pretty much anyone. You can get in, go in business with someone uh, freaking selling ice cream. The minute something goes wrong, there's, there are people who don't know how to handle it. They handle it all wrong. They either start to lie. They maybe hide from people. Uh, they just quit and disappear. They're embarrassed. Um... They file bankruptcy. There's so many things. Then you have those who they run, they hit a wall, but they stand up and they try to handle it and they take care of their business and they speak up. Not everybody's going to be happy. There's going to be other people on on the team that are going to be disappointed. Um, Some promoters get in, their intentions are 100, but then they pull out for, for different reasons. One of the main reasons that a lot of promoters pull out is because of the money. In other words, they are not selling tickets, okay? Now, of course, me as a manager, I want to do the show because we have to pick up the the balance of our money. We only receive half as a deposit. I want the rest. It's a significant amount of money. I want it, (laughs) okay? But... If the promoter is not selling tickets, they might not have the money. Forget about what I want. They might not have the money. You cannot take blood out of a stone. It doesn't exist. So to get angry at that, anybody who's worked me, with me in the past and they've had that issue where they had to postpone, usually postpone a, a, an event, they never had a problem with me. Now. If it's my personal acts, if it's an act that I'm just involved as an agent, well, I have to go to their manager or to them and ask them, hey, this promoter's having an issue selling tickets because of this, this, and that. He would like to change the date so he has a little bit more time or maybe to kind of clear. Because what happens is sometimes someone can set up a show in a city and then without realizing that the week before or that same weekend uh, Mark Anthony's coming to town and doing a concert there's a good chance it's gonna hurt you it's gonna hurt that promoter so what does the promoter do 
Does he go in there and try to compete with Mark Anthony, knowing that he hasn't even sold any tickets yet? Or does he try to see if he can maybe postpone the date? You know, honestly, you want to try to postpone the date. Is that what I want? No. But at the same time, I don't want to bring my axe into a club that's empty. That's not going to look good on us. And most of the time, the promoters will blame the artists. They'll blame the artists. I've seen it happen so many times. Oh, yeah, yeah, the place is empty, man. Yeah, they're not much of a draw. And I've seen that. I've seen that said with so many artists. Every artist you can think of. From the smallest to the largest and everybody in between. So, so you really don't have promoters that go in with those intentions, okay? The intentions are usually pure, they're usually good, and then they hit a wall and they need a way out. One of the reasons, this is one of the reasons why I always encourage promoters to work with an agent. Now I know that this sounds very biased because I am a booking agent. So yeah, it's like, oh yeah, of course, Latif, of course you want to deal with agents. Okay, let's put it this way. You don't even have to deal with me. I don't care who your agent is. You should always work with an agent, okay? And two easy reasons. There's more reasons, but let me give you two simple ones, okay? Number one, a legitimate agent, as a promoter, you don't have to pay them. You don't have to pay them. The artist pays them. So here you have a, a, a professional on your team that you don't have to pay. What? Come on. Like, who? Now, the, the, the artist might not want you to use a, 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 an agent because it will cost them 10%. But is that fair to you? Is that a, a smart business move for you to do, to go and try to book direct or to try to, you know, try to weed out the agent? Again, don't worry about me. You don't ever have to book from me, any agent. This is the chain. This is how it should be done, okay? The second reason is, as a promoter, you probably have, if, especially if you're new, you probably have no relationships with any of the artists. Artists are all about making their money. They could be personal. They could seem friendly. I hear all, I, oh my God. I hear the stories all the time. Oh, man, he's mad cool. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, once the show is over, you're nothing but the last show. Now they're looking at the next show. Not saying that they're cold. I'm not trying to diss my artists, any of the artists. That's just how it is. We're done. Now we got to focus on the next one. So if you see an artist at another event and you're a promoter, do not think because you just had the artist at one show that this now this artist is going to be bowing down to you at another event that maybe you went to, uh, did a surprise visit and you, you showed up. No, they're going to be bowing down to that promoter. You're just going to be like another fan. I see it all the time. I've done it. Sometimes a promoter that does well with me comes to my show. I can't cater to them. It's not about them. They can enjoy the show. I try to accommodate them, do whatever I can. But I got work to do. And I got another ass I got to kiss. So, so that's pretty much how that works. So those are two very important. Oh, and what I'm trying to say, or this is what I was trying to get to with that, is since we as agents, or any agents, have the relationship. I'm talking about legitimate agents, not, you know, not, not freaking uh you know, Bob, who has, uh, you know, Johnny O on his, uh, on his Facebook friend. Oh, yeah, I'm friends with Johnny on Facebook. Let me reach out to him. That's not the agent you want. Because that agent can't do anything from you. Not only that, since the artist knows that that's not a legitimate um, artist, a uh, legitimate agent, and that, that person is trying to make a dollar, the artist is going to tell that, that person, hey, okay, I need whatever. I need 3000 If you want to make your money, you have to add it on top. So now an act that was normally $3,000 is now going to cost you $3,500. So you just paid the extra $500. Me, if an act is $3,000, you're going to pay $3,000 because the artist is going to pay me. They don't like that. They don't like that. The dumb ones don't. The smart ones do. The smart ones understand. If you look at any of the really successful, the really good artists, somebody's booking them. Somebody's handling that stuff for them. Just look around. And they, you know, so 
you know, again, not trying to diss anybody, but you know, it's business. And you know, they have people that are out there, you know, representing them and it looks good. Because what happens is an artist with no representation kind of makes you wonder, oh, I guess nobody wants to represent them. Why? Maybe because they don't make money, you know? So it puts them in a whole other category. So because we have the negotiation, we have the relationship, let's say you have to move the date. It's easier because you having to move the date doesn't mean that anybody has to credit your deposit. Nobody has to give you a rain check. <clears throat> if it's an act of God, there might be some sort of clause in there or whatever, depending on the contract, but they really don't have to honor any of that stuff. What happens is they expect you to have insurance, rain insurance, rain day insurance, where if the, something goes bad with the weather, you have insurance on the event and you'll be able to you know, get your money back for the stuff that you rented, maybe your advertisements, the deposits and so on. That's what's expected. So it's not like, yo, I lost my money, man. What, you expect me to just take a loss? No. We expect you to have had insurance. So that way, if this would happen, you'll be able to get your money back. But as an agent with a relationship with different promoters, and even if I don't have a relationship, I mean, a relationship with different artists, I have the ability, more so than you as a, as a promoter, to move that date for you. Because where you might book that act maybe once, it, I doubt if you're gonna book them more than once a year. Nobody really books somebody for the same location, unless you're doing a tour and you're moving it around. But other than that, nobody really books an act. Without, with all the acts that are available, nobody's gonna bring the cover girls twice in one year. I mean, that's very rare. You know, they'll bring them back every year. That's different, you know? But there's too many other artists, you know? Uh, a lot of times I wouldn't even recommend that with any artist. Just, just you know, just move them around. But I have the, the ability to book artists more than once a year, more than twice a year. If I'm good and I have a good connection and and I'm really repping the, 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 the artist and the artist is, you know, honoring all my shows, I can have an artist perform every other week for the entire year. That's a... It's a lot of shows for the entire year. You know, I could give them 15, 20 shows for the year. So I have a little more leverage than the average promoter. I can go to the promote to the artist and say, hey, listen, this is a good count. They're really cool. They're doing the right thing. I want to move your date. Oh, okay, La. What date? I said, well, we're gonna give you a date. You let me know if you're available. Now, that I will throw back. We do have to make sure that the artist is available. Now, if, if the artist already has another date somewhere or has a wedding or a funeral or something, we can't do that date. They're going to have the first first uh, pick of what dates you have available. So you got to come to me with a few dates. And uh, but, but I can set up where you won't lose your money. All right. Um, they only do that for a certain amount of time. Usually it's like six months. They'll give you up to some will give you less. It depends that we negotiate. Um, I'll try to get you. I try to talk to you first anyway, because when I step to them, I would like to have a roundabout date. You know, you might say, okay, well, I want to get a date in May. Okay. Well, let me at least go to them. Tell them, listen, a date in May. And maybe I can even ask them what dates are you available? They might say, well, I'm available the whole month or I'm not available to these two days. Okay. So I could go back to you and say, okay, they're cool, but except for these two days. So, right so anyway so that's the deal with that so what i'm trying to get to here is that promoters do not come in with the intentions of screwing anybody you know if something goes wrong um i can't see a promoter wanting to move forward if they're not selling tickets if there's a mark anthony concert the same day in their neighborhood um if anything if 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 there's a, a f if the freaking venue got flooded and they're trying to kill it you know clean it out if there's a storm or the weather's bad they're not going to want to move forward i'll tell you it's not just the fact that they have to pay you the rest of the money a lot of them they have to also cover the expenses the flights and so on you know now sometimes sometimes they've already purchased the flights and stuff and then now the big promoters, a lot of times, they'll buy refundable tickets. 
they'll take care of, they'll do refundable tickets so that way if there is a problem they can get their money back or they can change the flight it doesn't cost them anything but the ticket itself will cost a little bit more than a regular economy ticket so that's the risk that they take they can take a chance and buy a regular non-refundable ticket cheap in hopes that nothing goes wrong or they could buy a, a little bit more expensive ticket with the assurance that if something goes wrong, they could get that money back. So most of the time, they buy non-refundable tickets. And then what they do is, if there's a problem, right away they get on the phone and they try to see if they can move the date. As soon as they have the date, they try to do that like right away. And then what they do is they repurchase the flights for the for the new date. Sometimes they might have to change. They have to pay the little change fee. So sometimes it's like a hundred dollars per ticket or a hundred dollars each way. So it's still cheaper than losing the flights in a hole. So, um, so that's usually you know how that works. So you could see why promoters would choose to pull out. You know now that's gonna piss off a lot of people. You know, artists nowadays, you know, you got a handful, they got jobs, but that money helps a lot. Even if they have a job, that money helps, it pays bills. It's pretty significant. Even with the smaller acts, the money, usually what they're going to get in the show is more than what they worked all week for. So it's a pretty significant amount of money. So they look forward to that. They are depending on it, actually. So they're going to get pissed off, you know? So anybody else... um. Another thing too is a lot of times the artists turn down a show. So let's say your show was May 5th and then that artist got several calls for May 5th somewhere else and they said, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that show. I'm already booked. And then you cancel your event or you postpone it. They're going to be upset. They're going to have something to say, damn, man, I just turned down three shows. Yeah, but you didn't know that. You didn't know that. So <clears throat> me personally, I don't ever want to see and a promoter lose money. That does not benefit any of us. And I try to get this through people's heads. One second. All right. I'm drinking my tea in a, a Madonna glass. So it's a it's a it's a mug, a Madonna mug. This was given to her by a, a fan friend. I forgot got the guy's name I don't even want to say I think I know who it is I don't want to say it just in case I'm wrong but anyway <laughs> um he probably doesn't listen to his podcast so I'm not worried about it. if he does however it'll be kind of cool <laughs> so anyway um but anyway so, so that's the deal with them now later on once they're seasoned once a promoter has done several shows then we have to kind of look at them a little, a little bit, a little deeper. We have to be a little careful because some of them learn little games. They learn these little tricks that they try to play. And unless you have experience with that, you're not going to see it. And they're going to get over, and you're going to take a hit, you know. And I'm talking about this is uh, the artists and their managers. You can take a hit, so you have to be really careful. You have to stick to your guns. You can't be so caught up and so concerned with the money you're going to make that you kind of get off a policy, you know? Um, sometimes you let them advertise uh, before a deposit is in. Sometimes you can do that, but you have to draw a line at some point. Uh, but most of the time, I don't recommend it. Try to get the money in before they start advertising, okay? Because they can advertise you for months. <coughs> Meanwhile, you have to turn down those shows. And if you don't turn down shows... Other people that might be interested in that date might see the flyer floating around. They say, oh, okay, man, I was interested in getting that artist, but I see they already booked May 25th, so I'm not going to call them. I'm going to call somebody else. So you just lost the show, and you got nothing in your pocket to, you know, that's, that's going to guarantee you that other, the, the other deposit from the, from the original uh, promoter. Contracts, okay. Yeah, we have contracts. We always have contracts. But do you really want to go there? If you have never been in an entertainment lawsuit, okay, I'm going to warn you right now. It's not a place where you want to be. You can, it's going to sound as cool as you want it to be, but you're going to realize and learn how smart the attorneys are when you're already, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 deep in for a freaking $2,000 show. 
So, and the promoters notice. Promoters don't want the issue either. A lot of times if you threaten them with a lawsuit or you have uh, an attorney reach out to them, a lot of times they're going to pull back and they're going to try to sell off. But if not, you're going to have a little bit of a scuffle in your hands. So you have to be very, very careful about how you approach that. You know, it can get really, it can just be a really bad experience. You know, so everybody knows this. So the contracts are basically just once you're at the gig, once you're at the show, everything's on there as far as what you, as far as what you need. Hold on. Okay, guys, I'm sorry about that. I had a phone call coming in. Um, so anyway, uh, where was I? <laughs> So anyway, yeah, so you're going to have those, you're going to have those who have been doing this for quite some time. So they know what works. Hey, I'm sorry about that, guys. I I have people who are trying to get through to me at this time. So um, I try to do the podcast late. So that way um, it's pretty quiet, but uh, it's okay. It's work. It's, it shows. So um, it looks good, but they'll, they'll reach out to me tomorrow. So, but anyway, so as I was saying, We have the bad promoters, the ones who have been doing this for quite some time, and they found little tricks or little ways to get it to get over. Um, If you're new to to any of this in the within the biz, um, they can get you. So you have to be very careful with that. So you you know again dealing with an agent uh, is always a is always a smart move. You know. So anyway. So that's, that's the deal. So you know, so we have we have we have those promoters who are seasoned. They know the little tricks of the trade, and there are some that are really. I mean, these these some of them they do pretty decent shows, but it comes at a cost. There's always some sort of drama, something wrapped around them. I do my best to try to stay away from them. Sometimes they they'll hit me up, and I've had it. I've had it where they've given me a, a really bad experience, and then. You know, three months later, they're hitting me up. And, and you know how they usually hit me up? They'll say, hey, Lati, what's up? Hey, do me a favor. Send me your bank info. I got 30 grand I'm going to put in your account. I want to do this lineup. And as tasty as that sounds, man, you know, um, that could be a really, really profitable event for me. I can't forget what I had just gone through with this promoter. And therefore, I have to decline the offer. And... Uh, I might deal with them as a manager, uh, but I won't deal with them as uh, as an agent because I'm dealing with too many people and somebody in my camp might get screwed and I don't want that to happen. So one group, two groups I can handle, but I can't do. But To be honest, whenever that has happened, I'm trying to think if there was ever a time that I even still did the the gig, even with just my act, and uh, I've passed. So uh, I just, I just don't want to. I just, I don't want to go through it, you know. And then there are those who are really good, and they just hit a wall. So sometimes we just got to work with them. We have to be understanding, you know. But um, you know, I don't want people to think that you know promoters are just out there booking these these fake events and then just not moving forward. They might do stupid things though. Don't promote an event unless you're ready to go with it. You know, don't go and try to test the market with a lineup. Don't do that. That's bad. So don't, you know, don't put, hey, I'm doing this concert on this. I got these 10 acts. Who's going to go? Don't do that, especially if you're doing social media because you're not going to get the response that you think. (laughs) That takes time. You know, you have to build that in time. So we don't want that. We don't want people doing stuff like that. If you do your homework, consult with your agents, consult with your DJs, and then when you're ready to to pull the trigger, do everything the right way. Get your contracts, get the the, the artists um, locked in with the contracts, get the deposits out, get your promos together, and then, then, you know, start to hustle, you know? So... But anyway, uh, so that, that, you know, that's pretty much how that, how that, that whole thing goes. But, you know, I've been seeing a lot of this back and forth, a lot of this riff happening with, um, with the promoters online and, you know, I want to stand up for them. 
Some of them are asses. Some of them deserve it. But a lot of them don't. A lot of them don't. So, you know, give them, you know, give them a little flack. We don't want to lose our promoters. And I do encourage other people, if they're ever interested in trying their hand, probably the first step would be to pick up a copy of my book. Pick it up, you know. Um, and it will at least give you a little foundation and let you know if this is something that you would actually be interested in. Maybe you're not. Maybe it's not for you. It's not for everybody. And if it's not for you, I don't even want you to give it a try. You have to know in your mind and in your heart that you can go. You should be excited about it. You can, You should be excited about the possibilities. And those are the people that I look for. If, if you have this excitement and this confidence that you're going to pull it off, I got you, man. We can do an incredible event, you know? So I just want to put that out there. It was on my head. Um, so I thank you guys again. I'm going to, I'll talk to you, uh, tomorrow night. I'm ready to shut down. It's pretty late. Uh, so until tomorrow, good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.